Well, this is our sermon wrap in which we give a preview of the study that we're going to be doing this coming Sunday. And we are in the book of Colossians. And so we've been studying this theme that true maturity is found in Christ alone. There is no other place, there's no other person in which we could find that wholeness that we truly need. Christ alone is the one who gives that. Paul's central admonition is, is this, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So continue to walk in the Christ that you have received as the source of your salvation. And this study has taken us to the middle of chapter one, in which we're looking at this poem in which Paul is exalting Christ as the Lord of creation in the first half of the poem and the Lord of new creation in the second half of the poem. So when we look at the first half of the poem, we're looking at Jesus as the Lord of what is. He's He's over all the power structures in this world. But as we transition to the second part of the, the poem, we're asking the question, well, why are things so broken as they are? Because when we look at the world around us, and even when we look within us, we realize that things are not as they should be. We are broken people, and we live in a, a broken, uh, chaotic, uh, tangled world. And, and so we're asking this question, okay, so how is it that Jesus is the Lord of, of creation, but how can he become, how can he be, what qualifies him to be the Lord of new creation? And that's why Paul points out these, these different aspects of Christ's person and his work that qualifies him to be the Lord of new creation. He says that he is the head of the church, the head of the body, the church. So Paul is, is comparing the church, that is those who follow Jesus, those who are vitally connected to Jesus, to a body of which Christ is is the head. So he's the head of the body, which is the church, but he also is the one who brings people from death to life. He is the firstborn from the dead. Jesus has power over uh, death. He, is, he conquered death by his resurrection from the dead. He guarantees that those who believe in him will also rise from the dead. That qualifies him to be the Lord of, of new creation. But also, not just that he brings people from death to life. Not only that he was the first to lead the triumph over death, but also because he is the only one who can bring people who are alienated from God into a right relationship with God. That's what Paul means when he says that Jesus Christ reconciles all things to himself, to, to God, and he did it by the blood of his cross. So the peace that we can enjoy as followers of Jesus Christ, the flourishing, the wholeness, comes only because of a very expensive sacrifice the most expensive sacrifice, and that was the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. It took that to purchase our peace, to make us right with God again. And so you see how Paul is explaining that Jesus is not only the Lord of creation, things as they are, but also the Lord of new creation, things as they should be. He has the power to hold all things together, and he also has the power to bring together what has been separated, and that is we have been separated from God, and Jesus is the one who brings us to peace with God. We'll be looking at these themes, and as we anticipate Sunday, I'm praying, and I hope that you'll be praying, that the Lord would just draw our hearts to Christ as the only one who can bring us to God, and as the only one who could bring us to true maturity.